Hey everybody, Tim Sternhouse, Sales Effectiveness Manager for SBS, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a whiteboard on how to sell an employee handbook. Uh, so, you know, typically when I'm talking with small businesses, what they tell me is that their number one goal is to grow their business. But just as important as it is to grow their business, they want to protect their business. So we start having conversations about, you know, hey, here are different ways that AAP can help protect your business. One of the big things we can do is to establish and implement an employee handbook. But then we start to hear things like, you know, I'm just a small company, don't have a lot of complexity, we only have a few employees, we've been around a long time, we're mom and pop, we don't need an employee handbook, that's not for us. But the problem is, is that it doesn't matter how many employees you have, if you've got five or 5,000 employees, you're still susceptible to things like employee lawsuits and unemployment claims. And if you think about American society in general, it's extremely litigious. And a recent study released by HISCO says that on average, one in 10 employers are charged with an employee lawsuit. And the average settlement for these employee lawsuits is $125,000. Now, the most common employee lawsuit is actually discrimination. And in 2014, the EEOC, or Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, said that there were over 88,000 discrimination charges brought against employers. Now, the reason there are so many discrimination charges is that if you think about it, Discrimination is, a, is a, a relatively easy thing to do, or, or it's relatively easy to be discriminated against. The reason being is that almost everybody is part of some kind of protected group, right? So you could be a red person, be a green person, blue person, and you're going to fall into some kind of protected category. And it's very easy for one of these people to feel as though they've been treated unfairly or not the same as everybody else. Now all of a sudden, you've got a discrimination lawsuit against you. The other thing is unemployment. Now, smaller companies don't have the same kind of tools and resources that larger organizations do to combat unemployment. They don't have handbooks, they don't have policies, they don't have HR professionals. So it's very difficult for them to, to adequately fight unemployment claims. And they'll end up losing unemployment claims that large organizations would win just because they don't have the right things in place. So unemployment is a challenge for small companies. And in 2014, there were actually $33 billion in unemployment benefits that were paid out to unemployed workers. That's a lot of unemployment benefits paid out. And unemployment is primarily funded through taxes on businesses. So uh, the more that a, uh, the more unemployment claims that a small business loses, the higher their tax rate's gonna go, the less money they've got. So it, it's extremely important for small companies to have the right policies and procedures in place to combat unemployment claims. So as I mentioned, one of the best ways or one of the things that ADP can do to help protect companies is establish and implement an employee handbook. So what an employee handbook is going to do, it's going to put the company's policies and procedures in place, it's going to establish consistency, it's going to communicate expectations to the employees and the managers to help them combat employee lawsuits and combat unemployment claims. But I think the problem is, is that a lot of times this is where our conversation ends when we're talking to our partners and our prospects. You know, you, you give them that pitch, say, hey, it can help protect you from lawsuits and unemployment claims, but at that point, it, it kind of stops. And it leaves the, uh, the, the business owner saying, okay, well, how are you gonna do that? So I think it's extremely important to get a little bit more specific. So I think here's where some of the big takeaways are gonna be. So specifically what I mean, and some specific ways that an employee handbook can do this, is by putting a policy in place such as a progressive discipline policy. So at ADP, we know what a progressive discipline policy is. Uh, get back on track, or a performance improvement. 
Um, it's, it's not a good thing for employers to just go and start firing their employees because it costs a lot of time and money to hire and train these people. So what they do is they put them on these progressive discipline plans to progressively try to get them better. And if it doesn't work out, then they end up terminating them. But the other thing that it does is it establishes consistency. Consistency is an extremely important word when we're talking about discrimination because consistency helps to treat everybody the same way. So not only is a progressive discipline plan going to um, you know, create a, a, an environment where we're trying to get your employees better, but it's also gonna consistently treat everybody the same way. So for example, things aren't working out with Red Girl over here. A little stir. Employer goes to Red Girl and says, you know what, you're not performing, uh, things aren't working out, you're fired. But the problem is that Red Girl knows that Green Guy a couple months back was given many more opportunities. He was given four or five chances uh, to, to get back on track and to, to turn things around before he was terminated. So now Red Girl feels that she's been discriminated against and the reason she was terminated was because she was red, not necessarily because she was underperforming. She goes to the EEOC, she files a complaint, and now suddenly the employer is in big trouble. So had that employer put a progressive discipline policy in place and consistently treated everybody the same, but then also, just as important, communicated expectations to the employees and the managers, because the managers, the managers are the ones a lot of times that are dealing with these situations. So it, it communicates to them how to consistently handle performance, performance problems. So that would have helped this employer in that situation uh, to avoid a discrimination lawsuit because they could say that we've, we've established a consistent process and here's documentation on how we've treated everybody the same. The other policy that uh, can be put in place is anti-harassment. Anti-harassment just says it's not okay to harass and uh, if you do, here's what will happen. And it also gives, uh, it notifies the employees how they can report harassment should they feel they've been, uh, should they feel that they've been harassed, right? But what this does in terms of fighting unemployment is this. Let's say you've got Red Girl here. She's been uh, making bad comments, inappropriate comment, comments to, to Blue Guy over there. He feels very uncomfortable. He goes to the employer, says, hey, you know, Red Girl, she's been uh, making me feel very uncomfortable. The employer goes to Red Girl, says, this isn't what we do here, that's unacceptable, you're terminated. Well now Red Girl, she doesn't have a job, so she goes and she uh, files for unemployment. The employer rejects that claim and says that she was harassing her coworker, so there, you know, she should not receive unemployment. Well now the unemployment office wants to know, well, did you have a progressive discipline policy in place? Did you have an anti-harassment policy? Did you notify the employee that this could be grounds for determination? Did you uh, give her steps to, to correct her actions and to get better? Um, how was how this process treated? Was it consistent? So um, without having these things in place, the employer has less of a chance of winning these claims. So if the employer were to put these things in place, were to put a progressive discipline policy in place, an anti-harassment policy, have the employee sign off on the handbook, then when there is a, a, a harassment situation, they can then reference the handbook and say, per company policy, uh, this is unacceptable. I'm giving you a written warning. Then I'm going to give you a, 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 a verbal warning, then a written warning, then terminate it. Then when it goes to an unemployment hearing, the employer can say, I've got written, written documentation. I've got a company policy. That then gives them a foundation to stand on to fight these claims. And without it, they're not going to lose every single one of them, but they're going to have a lot less of a chance of winning those claims without it. So um, I think really, guys, the point here is that you're able to sit down with your partners, with your, have conversations with your partners and with your prospects and say, hey, you need an employee handbook to help combat employee lawsuits and to fight unemployment claims, but specifically, here's how we can do that, by putting a progressive discipline plan in place, by putting an anti-harassment policy in your employee handbook. These things are going to establish consistency and communicate expectations. And guess what, good news, ADP's got a great product called the Employee Handbook Wizard. We can, we can get one of these things created for you. It's super easy and uh, you know, we're gonna help protect your business. So um, that's all I got. If uh, you got any uh, questions or any comments, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can email me, timothy.sternout.adp.com. Thank you.